predators and prey. Aquatic species must compete for aquatic resources to survive. One adaptation that reduces some of the stress of competition is for species to specialize in the way they get their food. We can think of water in a column. Fish that feed on insects that fall in the water from vegetation along the shoreline or along the stream bank often eat near the surface. Fish that prey mostly on smaller fish may roam throughout the water column. Some fish, such as catfish, feed near the bottom. Feeding at different levels in the water column helps one fish species reduce competition with other species. Feeding specialization helps the species to fit into a particular niche. Predation is a form of competition. Both predator and prey are competing against each other for survival. The predator wants to eat the prey, while the prey wants to keep from being eaten. This is a life or death struggle for both predator and prey. To complicate matters, a species may be both a predator and prey at the same time. Many fish species shift from being prey when young and small to become a predator when they become older and larger. Some species, such as bass, even prey on their own young. Predator-prey relationships develop naturally within a community. It's a balancing act as numbers of predators and prey vary over time. The process is essential to keeping populations of organisms at about the carrying capacity of their habitat. Here's an example of how changing the balance between predators and prey can affect an aquatic ecosystem. Largemouth bass are a predator and bluegill are their prey. Catching and removing all the largemouth bass in a pond leads to an can lead to an overabundance of bluegill since bass are no, no longer there to eat the bluegill. No longer being eaten by bass, the bluegill may quickly overpopulate their habitat and exceed the carrying capacity of the pond. The now large number of bluegill quickly eat all of their available food, such as all the appropriately sized aquatic insects and zooplankton. Without the zooplankton grazing on the phytoplankton, this is algae, the algae quickly become overabundant. The pond then turns green and turbid with algae. The algae grow too rapidly and use up all the available plant nutrients in the pond water. Without nutrients, the overgrown algae dies all at once, can die all at once. Decomposers such as bacteria then feed on the dead algae forming large amounts of detritus. Decomposition of the large amounts of detritus uses up all of the dissolved oxygen in the water. And with little dissolved oxygen in the water, bluegill in the pond can, that have become overabundant can grow very slowly. And, and if the oxygen levels get too low, can even result in die-off of some of the bluegill. But the channel catfish may survive if they're in the pond because Bluegill require more dissolved oxygen in water than do channel catfish. Well, this is just a hypothetical example of what possibly could happen. And, and it has to do with what happens by simply removing a single species from the pond, such as the predatory largemouth bass. By doing that, an entire ecosystem, an entire aquatic community can undergo profound change that affects many of the other species, both directly and indirectly.